Hello, I'm Renata Gambino and this video is about distributed cognition. We will start by giving a definition. What is distributed cognition? It is a research branch which is focused on the human brain and in the relation on the relationship between what is in the mind and what and the relation which the mind has with the world in which it is in. Uh, this brings us to a further concept which is that of a holistic system. A mental content seen as a holistic cognitive system is all considered as non-reducible to individual cognition. It is also extended into in the environment and therefore information is made available to other agents and is gained and promoted through different media working within this holistic cognitive system. Distributed cognition is uh, considered as embodied, embedded, extended, and inactive. This is the principle of, of for e-cognition, which is uh, very well represented in a famous book that you can find in the bibliography, and also in the last period as uh, emotive. Let's see what these uh, terms mean. Embodied regards the unity of body and mind. Embedded means that the mind is to be considered in the relationship with the environment. Inactive it means that the mind is also related to the body and to its quality of action. Uh, and extended considers all the elements which are biological or mechanical, which we use uh, to interact with the environment. And emotive uh, is the branch which studies how much emotion in, is in, important in the interaction with the environment. So let's see in deep what embodied means. Cognition cannot fully be described in terms of abstract mental processes because it is rooted in the body. It is, must uh, be involved uh, as a mind in the body and uh, this means as a living system made of brain and body. Let's go to the embedded term. This means that cognition is not isolated. Uh, and separated from the agent's ecological niche. Instead, it displays layers of co-determination with the physical, social and cultural aspects of the world. Extended means that cognition is often offloaded into biological beings and not biological devices to serve a variety of functions that would be impossible or too difficult to be achieved by only relying on the agent's own mental processes. Let's see, for instance, we use... Um, uh, we use a computer to uh, uh, upload uh, informations and to elaborate informations and this works very well and it is part of our way of thinking about things. Cognition is also uh, intended as enacted, inactive, because it is conceived uh, as a set of meaningful relationships determined by an adaptive two-way exchange between the biological features and the living being and the environment. So our way of being able to move in the world determines the way we represent the world around us. Last thing, last but not least, the emotions have a substantial influence on the cognitive processes in humans, including perception, attention, learning, memory, reasoning, and problem solving. Particularly important uh, are, be, uh, have been uh, proved to be emotions within uh, attention and motivation. And these are two particular things that are very important for our effort to improve educational uh, processes. So in this sense, we have a brief uh, consideration about cognition and uh, uh, these elements have to be considered when uh, thinking about collaboration within a learning process. 
And I hope that this will be important for you to gain a new, uh, insi new insights when projecting your course. Thank you.